Hi, this is Robert McCune, and this is EDL 856 in Module 5, Understanding My North Town Community. Um, and I had little challenge because North Kansas City is a small little community within uh, Kansas City. And so I had to kind of look at the picture of North Kansas City and then always kind of in the background also have uh, Kansas City as a whole in my mind as well. Um, known customs and traditions for my school and community. Um, the expectation is uh, for students to apply to a two to four year college. Uh, last year, district wide, we had 100% of seniors uh, accomplish that goal, which is uh, pretty cool. It's not necessarily that they need to go to college, that they must go to college, but just that they apply. Um, students, uh, we are a very diverse group. Students are very open and accepting of all groups. Um, they were, there was a, uh, a student um, kind of poll taken, and one of the things that they like is that uh, you can be who you are at our school. Um, one of the cool things is open lunch. Um, we have a hot dog church every Wednesday. A local church uh, feeds students hot dogs and chips uh, and a drink. Uh, for football games, we have a senior wall um, that everyone looks forward to. Um, jumping up on there when their time comes. Uh, homecoming for us is really big. Um, we are a an older school and homecoming uh, goes way back. And so homecoming is probably more important at our school than prom. Um, and we have a parade that goes along with it and so on. Um, we have a powder puff game uh, between junior and senior girls. Uh, leaf rake day, uh, which you can see um, to the right. Um, we got into the community and rake leaves. That's kind of become an annual thing. Um, adopt a family. Um, this is going on for as long as I've been there. Um, students raise money um, and adopt certain families um, and then go out and buy presents for them uh, for the holidays. Um, we have a holiday breakfast for the staff. Uh, Mr. NKC is a male pageant, um, usually raising money for a good cause. Um, and it's a really good time, really funny. Uh, Snake Saturday Parade is always the Saturday before um, St. Patrick's Day. Um, we are an international baccalaureate school and we have an IB dinner um, that has become a tradition and there's a lot of things that go along with that. Prom, of course, and then lastly, uh, a senior breakfast, um, the day um, where seniors go and come have breakfast and then they go and do their rehearsal for graduation. Uh, know the population characteristics. Um, the enrollment of North Kansas City High School last year was 1,555. Uh, that number has probably gone up to just about 1,600 this year. Uh, minority enrollment, 50%. Um, free and reduced lunch, uh, 52%. Um, but that's also a number of people who claim free and reduced lunch. There's all, I always think, I um, mean, I've always been told that that number probably goes up about 7 to 10%. Um, for students who claim it, uh, who probably could be eligible for that. Uh, we are listed as a large suburban school, which I kind of find interesting. Uh, we're just labeled suburban because we're not in the um, Kansas City kind of I-435 uh, downtown loop. Um, I would not label us as a suburban school. We are a Title I eligible school. Uh, we draw from a very, from the very uh, varied economic area, we have very high-end students um, who come from uh, high-end families, high-income families, and we have very low-income families. So we're kind of just a cool mixed bag, I think. Um, our students speak 26 different languages. We have people from all over, um, people from the African continent, uh, students from Kurdistan, um, just kind of all over the place. And we have a very large ELL program. Um, know the communication channels of uh, kind of my community. Um, I think the first thing that uh, I would go to and, and parents I think go to is the district website. And from there, we don't have a set school website. Our school website is kind of um, directed through the district website. So the district website has a warehouse of all the information. Uh, they also get information from social media um, Facebook, Twitter, um, and even some will get information through Snapchat. Um, 
social media provides an outlet for almost immediate uh, information um, or kind of looking at pictures of different events. Um, we try at our school to uh, update it and keep it up to date as much as possible. Um, and so that's a good quick way for parents to um, and for the community to get informed of different events and so on. Um, there's also <coughs> the traditional telephone um, that they can call and uh, I know each teacher and each person has uh, their own specific number um, where they can leave a message and it actually pops up um, on one of our emails and so you can't forget it. Um, remind text, which I use quite frequently uh, to send information to students. Parents can also log into that. Uh, email is probably the preferred method of contact. Um, and then we are in the KC uh, metro area. And so the KC market has a large number of TV stations, large number of radio stations that provide all kinds of information, particularly inclement weather days and so on. Um, know the community groups. Um, there are numerous groups affiliated with North Kansas City High School um, and all the different clubs uh, that are get active into the community. Uh, FBLA, Future, Future Business Leaders, um, FCCLA, um, Young Democrats. There's a lot of groups that go out and engage with the community. Um, there are numerous churches in the area. Like I mentioned, we have the Hot Dog Church, which is the first Christian church. We have the First Baptist Church, First Methodist Church, um, all who um, the school uh, relies on for help and availability. Um, we have the city government of North Kansas City. Um, the Kansas City government as well. Um, Kansas City government doesn't really have anything over the North Kansas City government, but it's just an overall policy for the area that kind of dictates what happens. Um, state representatives, um, North Kansas City's state representative is actually a Northtown grad, and so they would have influence um, in that community. Um, numerous labor unions, North Kansas City is from, is an older manufacturing uh, part of the city. And so uh, there's still a lot of uh, labor union presence um, within the city. Um, the NKC Business Council, which has uh, grown and become a force in the district, um, in the city actually, and trying to lure new businesses because there's a lot of turnover happening. Um, club athletic teams using uh, school and city facilities, um, volleyball, basketball, Numerous programs come in and use our field house, uh, use the tennis courts, um, and use the softball and park, which the school and the city, um, and thereby the district, um, all have an agreement um, to let those groups use those. Uh, there's a lot of alumni still in the area, and then um, there's some faculty that live in the district as well. Uh, the leadership um, within the community, um, have the mayor and the city council of North Kansas City, um, and then the overarching uh, Kansas City uh, metropolitan area government. Um, you have the NKC school superintendent, the board of education, and then going down through the high school principal. Um, our congressman is uh, Emmanuel Cleaver, and he um, frequently comes to the school to talk to students, and so he has a vested interest uh, in the area. Um, once again, Missouri State Representatives, faculty provide leadership. Um, the um, Not necessarily the our school PTA, because we don't really have a, a large parent presence, um, but the district PTA president um, lives really close and is very influential on social media and trying to gather parent groups. Um, NKC Business Council president um, is an influential presence, home and business owners, and then the homeowners president for NKC. And there's just one because um, it is a smaller community. Uh, community leaders characteristics. Um, a lot of it's political. Um, just going through that list, most of those uh, positions would be political positions. So you always have to know um, and look at who the audience is um, and who they're talking to and kind of why they're talking to them. Um, easiest way to communicate with all those is through uh, a phone call or through email. Um, since kind of um, looking at the political side of it, um, 
the closer you go towards downtown Kansas City, kind of in our, um, my school is part of the district. It becomes more democratic the further north you go, the more rural you get um, at the northern side of the district towards the more northern high school. Uh, it is definitely a more Republican part. Um, all groups have a vested interest in the city, in the school, and in the district because they may have um, kids, grandkids, neighbors, and different acquaintances. Um, it's a very tight-knit community, very tight-knit group. Um, and community has shown it will invest in its schools. Um, they just passed a hundred million dollar bond uh, to build new two elementary schools up north to add for that growth. Um, but then our building is over 90 years old and is in need of an update. And so they um, threw 65 of that hundred million dollars our way. And we're in the process of uh, a very big renovation. Uh, economic conditions. Um, I looked online and found some statistics um, looking at the medium household income um, for this. Um, and so North Kansas City is at a little below the state of Missouri's, uh, which not I'm not surprised, um, but it has gone up even though a little bit of inflation has gone up a little higher than inflation um, since 2000. And that's kind of part of the rebirth that is kind of going on within the city, estimated median household income um, has uh, gone up as well and is actually more significant uh, for the um, house and condo value. Um, and that's a lot of newer buildings and newer condos and newer houses have been built uh, just in the past five years. And so that has uh, gone up. Um, and so um, I think North Kansas City is on the upward trend of economic conditions. Um, as I said before, it was a formerly large manufacturing community that is experiencing rebirth with new businesses and housing. Um, and part of that is $68 million renovation of the high school. You know the political structure, education and education dollars are politically driven. Uh, city of North Kansas City is democratic. Kansas City North itself, which is Kansas City North of the Missouri River, is a mixed bag. As I said earlier, the closer you are to downtown, the more democratic it is. The farther away, the more Republican it is. And then you can find our district's budget um, at the link right there. Social tensions, I wouldn't really say there are any. Um, I included a picture of our homecoming court um, to kind of just see there's a mixed bag. It's a very diverse group. Um, the students kind of set the tone with that. Um, there are numerous immigrant families, numerous religions represented because of those immigrant families. Um, and the school is a driving force in keeping that tension low. Uh, extra sources of information. Here's the websites for the city of North Kansas City, uh, the district website, the high school website, the business council website, and then um, Kansas City, Missouri overall's website. Power structures. Um, the NKC Business Council is very influential because they are bringing in a lot of new businesses um, and taking a lot of those old manufacturing factories um, and redeveloping them. The city of North Kansas City, the district, the high school, and then probably, the, as I said earlier, the biggest influence is Kansas City, Missouri, um, and they drive a lot of what goes on. Multicultural issues. High school and its diversity drives most of the multicultural awareness in the area, different high schools, clubs. Um, there's a multicultural club, uh, Snake Saturday Irish Festival um, is always a big deal um, and drives some awareness for those issues. Power structure, um, Missouri State Board of Education, um, the NKC Board of Education, the superintendent, the principal, community groups, parents, um, elected officials um, are all involved in determining the education um, and what should happen um, moving forward. Measuring public opinion. Um, our district has a five-year district improvement plan, which is the driving force for all district policies. They get the plan from um, the Missouri Department of Education. They get input from all stakeholders and they develop a balanced scorecard, which you can see um, the four main characteristics of that balanced scorecard, student, community, finance, and staff. Um, public opinion surveys. There's a yearly uh, survey for staff and students to know how things are going on. Um, the superintendent can also send out individual ones. Um, and then the five-year district improvement plan. Here are my references. Thank you.